Hey friend, I came across something important recently that I want to share with you. It's in Genesis 4, 26, and it says, Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Now this marks a pivotal moment in biblical history and the history of humanity because it's the beginning of public worship and the restoration of humanity's relationship with God after the fall of Adam and Eve. Now this act is calling on the name of the Lord begins with the lineage of Seth. In contrast to Cain's descendants, who pursued secular paths. The phrase call on the name of the Lord is more than a verbal invocation. It represents a heartfelt appeal to God for his presence and his assistance. In the Old Testament, calling upon the name of the Lord meant acknowledging God's sovereignty, often expressed through prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. This was humanity's response to the alienation from God caused by sin as people longed to reconnect with his presence again. The significance of this moment is heightened when we consider the different paths taken by the descendants of Seth and Cain. Now, while Cain's lineage focused on secular accomplishments like erecting cities and developing various arts, the family of Seth initiated a movement towards spiritual devotion. Two distinct cultures emerged from these families, one centered around worldly achievements and the other rooted in worship and faith in God. It's amazing and it's very pivotal for humanity. The act of calling on God can be seen as an early form of public worship, the first community that would recognize and honor the Creator. And this community became known as the sons of God in contrast to the sons of men who followed Cain and departed from the faith. Seth's lineage generally had spiritual devotion and a commitment to God. For example, Enoch, part of Seth's lineage, walked with God and was taken up by him. See, Enoch's close relationship with God and his being translated into heaven without experiencing death was because of his life of extraordinary faith and righteousness. Another key figure in Seth's line is Noah described as a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah's faith and obedience to God led him to build the ark, which, as you know, preserved humanity during the great flood. And Noah preserved a faithful remnant that would repopulate the earth after the flood. In contrast, Cain's lineage focused on secular accomplishments and invocations, uh, innovations rather. Cain's First son, Enoch, inspired the city that Cain built, which he named after his son. This was one of the earliest forms of urbanization and the establishment of a settled community, a significant development from the nomadic lifestyle of earlier humans. And Lamech, a descendant of Cain, was the first person to take two wives. This was a departure from the monogamy God and Adam and Eve modeled. The sons of Lamech and Ada were pioneers. For example, Jabal was described as a father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock, starting pastoralism and the domestication of animals. And Jubal's, uh, pardon me, Jabal's brother, Jubal, <laughs> was the father of all those that play the harp and the pipe, a pioneer developing music and the arts. And Tubal-Cain, the son of Lamech, was a forger of instruments of bronze and iron making him the first craftsman of metal and tool making. Now these achievements focus on cultural, technological, and urban development and are turning away from the spiritual focus on God. Cain's lineage is not associated with the acts of worship or devotion to God. Instead, their legacy is marked by contributions to civilization and the arts, which contrast sharply with the spiritual path that Seth's descendants took. Seth's line exhibited a deep commitment to worshiping and following God, laying the groundwork for the covenantal relationship between God and humanity. You see, calling on the name of God means invoking his nature, his character, and his essence. It acknowledges who he is and invites his nature to permeate our lives, communities, and hearts. And like a child calling on the presence of a mother, humanity called on the presence of God to come and be with them. This is so significant that Paul said, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The act of calling is not only an act of worship, but also a declaration of faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
Calling on the name of the Lord was the beginning of organized faith in God. It represented a significant sh shift from individual to community worship, where people collectively sought God's presence. This was a recognition of God's grace and declaration of their identity as his people. And as Seth's descendants began invoking the Lord's nature, they demonstrated their commitment and a life of faith contrasting with the secular humanism of Cain's descendants. This fundamental shift set the stage for future generations to build on the importance of worship as a response to God's grace. So Genesis 4.26 clearly declares humanity's desire to reconnect with God. The act of calling on the name of the Lord was the beginning of public worship. So I encourage you to call on, invoke, and seek God's name in your daily life, not just in moments of need, but as a regular part of your routine. It's more than just saying a prayer. It's about making space for God in your heart and your thoughts and your actions. And when you do that, you're inviting his presence into everything you do, which can change how you experience life. And also let your life reflect this commitment. Like Seth's descendants who stayed focused on God, you can make your life a testimony to his grace and his love. This focus stands out and makes a difference in the world that's often caught up in other things. So keep seeking God. Make worship a regular part of your life. And let that shine through in everything you do. I hope that encourages you. God bless.